what I found he's quite slimy <laughs> he's fine he's pretending to be dead wait until I put him down yeah off you go come on Up. got a lot of loose stuff flying around here and we have a big delivery of building supplies coming in tomorrow so we're going to clean this up get this whole uh, area walkable so that we can get our drywall in and our insulation and continue the build So it's my first time that I'm uh, doing duct work and I did a lot of look up uh, on YouTube learned how to assemble all of this and apparently you just have to slide it into each other it does give some resistance and then you finish it off by putting a 2x4 in there and pretty much hammering all of the seams down so they don't open up again and then afterwards you put foil tape on all the seams so no air can escape so next I have to uh, assemble the whole duct run for our dryer because we're installing a washing and dryer in the bathroom and never done this so let's give it a try this piece here which is the outlet well it connects to the three wall vent piece like that gotta prep it so this needs to slide in there they have the same diameter right now but I've got to crimp it. So just crimp that. What it does is it's pliers that bend the ducting metal into little folds. So the diameter is a little bit narrower and can slide into the other piece. I 
then for our dryer, I talked to the um, contractor desk at the hardware store. They've been helping me through this project with a lot of good practical advice. Apparently it's better to choose rigid ducting for your dryer vent than the uh, flexible ones because the flexible ones tend to deteriorate with age and they also have more lint getting stuck in the folds of them which is a fire hazard and because I have the option to go with rigid ducting for the uh, dryer outlet why not? So that's what I'm doing. Like that, it's definitely a tight fit, but it's the only way to go. All right, next. Now this needs to fit onto this piece here. Took me a lot of uh, research to find out how to do that because this is definitely not prepped for the usual cleat system. So I have to prep it myself. So these are just regular tin snips and I'm putting little V grooves in there so that I can uh, fold them with this folding bar. side pieces so that so the seat cleat can slide over them. So now I need to measure how much to fold. That's about 3 8 because my folding bar has a 3 8 mark or groove just like that. Pliers here that can finish the fold. Perfect. 
Perfect. Same thing on the other side. This piece is now ready to connect to my duct front, except that I have to prep this one in the same way for the seat cleat. So again with the folding bar. Should be 10, but always measure as my motto. Got some S cleat here. I need two pieces of 10 inch. Assembly. S pieces. This one goes on to the other side of the S feet. Just a drive fitting because it's going to be too much of a hassle to assemble this piece onto the uh, outside vent piece while it's in the joist cavity. This is a, a practice run. Do know what I'm up against. Definitely have to start with this side. Okay, I've just finished uh, the last of the ducting, so our dryer duct and our uh, bathroom fan duct are in place. Next, I'm going to start plumbing, uh, more specifically the um, uh, what do you call it? more specifically the vent stack and the uh, wastewater stack, which of course for us is only for grey water but I still have to put it in place and after that I'll be doing the water supply so PEX tubing everywhere. Alright, let's get to it.
I've just finished uh, the rough work of the, uh, the waste stack and the vent stack for our plumbing. I'm very happy that I finished it. Uh, so there were a few challenges because I chose to do everything with two inch pipe, be ready for um, a nice big stack, get lots of ventilation, lots of uh, waste draining. And um, yeah, most of the challenges were because we have a, a small space and I, I try to avoid to go through the uh, external wall so that we can get more insulation in it. And instead I made use of the internal walls. So let's do a quick run. Okay, so here's the kitchen. And instead of um, building the, uh, the waste stack for the kitchen for the uh, sink into the wall, we're going to put that in the floor right over there. And then because I'm close enough to my uh, fence stack, less than three feet, which runs in the internal wall right here, and it goes outside through the floor. So this one goes right there into the ceiling and it runs into the bathroom right here. So it's coming from there going through the ceiling joists right over there and I gotta put some couplings in here from 2 inch to 2 inch which I didn't buy yet and then plan for this route but over here we go down to another uh, wet, fan, uh, wet stack which this will be the vent for a composting toilet and right there it connects to our washing machine box, which is right here. So that is vented. And then back to the main fence stack. It goes right there up into the exterior wall upstairs through the top of the wall and it exits the house or the cabin right below the, uh, the roof line where I'm going to later with the scaffolding uh, drill a hole in the roof and put the final piece on it but this is the rough work and yeah i'm very happy that it's finished and right here we have of course our little sink waste stack slash vent i made sure to oversize the pipes and that way we should be fine with venting and wasting and so with that work done, I'll finish this up once I have all the parts. I haven't glued anything yet because I glued the first few pieces and I made things harder in uh, planning the route. So it seems easier to do a dry fitting and then glue everything once the whole rough route is in place, which is um, what I'll do, I don't know, in a few days or so when I got the other parts. But uh, I next have to do the supply line, which is with PEX. But before I do that, I figured that it'd be easier to uh, build the staircase. That way I have a better idea of the exact location where the stairs run and how I can run my supply lines. Um, also, I can put some um, wall cladding uh, on the inside wall under the stairs, which will be our little uh, mechanical room and uh, it'll make things a lot easier. So next, stair building. So this is what happens when ants think that your scrap wood pile is a good lodging place. This is crazy. <laughs> so they put all of these needles in here and they started creating a massive nest. Well, we'll get rid of those guys. Okay, so we checked our other pile just to be sure and turns out that these guys have been busy everywhere. I'm glad we checked it now because the wood is not wet and it still looks okay. Now we'll get rid of them, but it is sure 
Annoying. Thank you, ant. Okay. <laughs> bye bye, ant. We'll drive them somewhere else. <laughs> Well, not drive. Dump them somewhere a bit further away from where we like to sit and away from our wood. Okay, so next I'm going to uh, connect these walls together, get some uh, top plates on and uh, build the platform with joists. That is not going anywhere.
that is how we build a winder. So yesterday I uh, finished the winder for our staircase and then I start working on uh, creating the, the templates for my stringers and um, I made use of that of a, uh, a website to do the mats for me based on my rise and run and the angle and all because we don't we don't have a, uh, a conventional staircase this is one of the few parts where I had to deviate from the uh, the building code simply because of the limitations of our cabin I have to go a little bit steeper with a little bit ri uh, higher of a riser and a little bit shallower of a, uh, a tread run so yeah I made use of that website and uh, trusted all the numbers. I mean, it looked great. Uh, everything worked out. So I, I drew out the uh, the template. I cut it out of my uh, my lumber, and then I put it on the wall here for a dry fitting. And I noticed that something was off, and I could not tell why. But the stringer came a little bit too short here, and it became a little bit too low. Uh, between my uh, my top floor and my uh, winder here so I was uh, a little taken back and um, ran the numbers again and again and again and the website's calculations worked out and I kept entering my own numbers here that I measured with the laser level and with a laser measure so I knew that my measurements were correct and the only thing that I can see is it does not fit. So then I went back to what I used to do and that's do the math by hand, uh, run the numbers in a regular calculator, not in a stair calculator online. And I noticed that although not much, there were some slight differences in the numbers, which means that the website must be wrong. And what did I learn out of it? Well, not only that, I lost a whole stringer that I cannot use now. I mean, we can use it in the winter for uh, firewood. Um, but do it yourself. So if you're going to build anything, do the math yourself. Do not just trust on a ready out of the box calculator to do it for you because it may not be accurate. And running the numbers side by side between the website and mine, I can only guess that there must be something going off in the rounding of, of the decimals. Because the website uses decimals instead of uh, a sixteenth or a thirty-second. And if I put those numbers in my calculator, they do get rounded. And in that rounding, there must be something that is off. So today, I'll do it again, make my stringers, another day of stair building, and this time I will get it right. What I've done is I put the old stringer on top of my stringer so that I can show you the difference. And it begins here, so I left this part on so that I can hang it on the uh, winder with a joist hanger. But that's a detail, I just forgot to include that in the, uh, the top stringer. But so the top one is the bad one and here you can already see the difference that my stringer is 3 16 to a quarter of an inch longer and it becomes very minuscule in the top but here you can also see that i have a little bit more of a rise in my stringer and again it's all very detailed but when it comes to stairs and pretty much anything would work or <laughs> anything I do in life. I like details. And so I wanted to redo this one before going ahead. Here again, you can really see that the top stringer has about an eighth of an inch of difference right there. And that makes that the rise is a little bit too low compared to what I want it which is this. So based on the internet calculation, based on my calculation. And it's an eighth of an inch per tread, which you may think is not much, but counted over six threads, that's, uh, that's three quarters of an inch. And those three quarters of an inch say that I would have kept my reject and pushed the three quarters of an inch into 
one tread, that would have been a very strange experience walking up or walking down those stairs where one step is different and the brain just freaks out over that. So I'm very happy that I uh, made the modification. And so right here at the top, everything looks okay. But then it starts dropping off. But no more. Fixed.